Welcome to the weekly update for the stock market. This is Critical Point. I'm Rich Pawson. It's February 5th. It is 8.39 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, uh, for this weekly update, I'm not going to discuss much of the foreign markets. In fact, I probably won't even show any charts. Basically, the global economy is likely to grow this decade right along with the U.S. There can be different timing on individual countries, however. Some of them may not grow for, or some of them may only grow for a few years, economic growth, some of that. They actually follow the same cycles, or at least I see evidence over the years, that the world is evolving more towards a European, North America, South America kind of model setup that I think goes back 500 years. Some of this has to do with globalization, and I realize we're actually breaking down globalization right now. Uh, under President Biden, we may actually try to rebuild it again, however. Ultimately, I think, yeah, the, the world's basically going to follow the same model I have for the U.S. for the super cycles and very long term. We're more entangled with one another, especially in financial markets, the stock market. So that means the stocks basically should go up this decade. And I think there will be periods of time that some of the global markets are going to outperform the U.S. because they dragged their feet during the 2010s. They did not recover as well or, or move on to new highs as well as the U.S. market. Uh, they still had lingering problems from the 2008-2009 Great Recession. But I think this is the decade where they catch up and move on. Okay, so I fully understand looking for opportunities in global investing. I like India for a very long-term play. I think they can outperform for decades. I still like China. There's still opportunities there. Uh, at least for the next few years anyways, or this decade, I think there's opportunities in South Korea, uh, Japan, some of the smaller Asian nations like Malaysia, Taiwan, Indonesia, all of those have some opportunities. I think there's even opportunities in Europe, even though we think of them as kind of socialistic and they don't do as well. Well, Germany normally outperforms France, but France is no sleeper. It's not necessarily sluggish. Italy actually looks buoyant to me, even though they have debt issues, they got political issues, but Mario Draghi, uh, formerly the head of ECB, is now going to be the, one of the heads of uh, Italy. And now if he can just get a coalition going, he may do quite well as a politician of putting Italy on the right track that can also, and since he's a banker, it can put it on right track with banking and help out with their finances. So I think there's opportunities everywhere. Uh, I think there's opportunities in South America, okay? Uh, Canada. But to me, it's still simple to do the U.S. I think the U.S. remains somewhat the overall leader. If U.S. really has a serious problem, the rest of the world's probably coming down. As long as the Syria, uh, U.S. is doing well to great, the, West, the rest of the world can do well uh, to great. All right, um, so that's my long-term scenario of the global economy and uh, related stock markets. I think globally we will see interest rates rise over the next several years, inflation rise, okay? But I'm not as bulled up as I should be on interest rates and inflation relative to the history of super cycles. I think something's different this time around. I think it's going to be held back somewhat. And if there's something bad coming from those high interest rates or inflation, I don't think it occurs the next decade. All right, so let's now go to the U.S. market. And what I want to say on the super cycles, very convinced the U.S. stock market is probably bullish into late next decade, early following when it probably may crash 40 to 90%. I can see the real serious 70 to 9% if it's coming, and I'm not saying it is for sure because things are different this time, but if it is coming, it could even delay to 2040s, late 2040s, early 2050s 50s for their absolute latest, okay? Interesting enough for some of this new modeling that's actually using old cycles that we've known about for decades, centuries, it does show we could have a super cycle downturn at the end of this decade. In fact, uh, it should drop into an 18-year cycle bottom, which is a minor super cycle. For some of you, that might be the 17.5 cycle that you see discussed on the internet and chatter and whatnot. Uh, dropping into that does mean there's a chance for something serious, but I've also studied the history of it going back a couple hundred years, and sometimes it's no more important than the smaller, lesser cycles. So it's not really saying it's going to get serious. The key is, 
is the cyclical top this time around. If it's as serious as what the bottom was in the 1930s, we can have a crashing market and as soon as the end of this decade. But I don't think so. I think it's going to take a little longer than that. At least what I'm telling you this morning is all those super cycles are bullish this decade. Okay, and I'm telling you that because I got some feedback over on stock tweets where I put out free tweets sometime and try to advertise sometime. And even though I suppose I have thousands of followers, I don't necessarily have a lot of interaction and I question what type of followers they really are, how serious they are in trading. At any rate, someone has followed me for some time there, likes what I put out, uh, basically ask, what is the what is my take on Elliott Wave? And I, he said EW, so I think he's referring to a specific service that basically they're calling for a surging stock market now that it's inside of Wave 3. I think that can occur this year and maybe over the next couple of years. However, that particular EW, again, maybe it's just a group of those chatting and he's looking at a bias, but I kind of took it as a, a specific service. At any rate, he said that they were looking for a top in 2023, 2024, and I always assume they always seem to be looking for 1929 crashes. I took it as something that they were looking for something very serious. I don't see that. I see the stock market is bullish this year, but I do see them being right on this wave. Three things that we may be in a surging market this year. Okay, so I like being bullish here. That's all there is to it. All right, I like where Biden's going. I, you know, I'm not necessarily in agreement with everything, and if you're not in agreement with anything, I think you're fighting the trend. All right, it's going to work somehow, some way. All right, so here's what I've got for you going into this decade. I say the stock market rallies to 6,800 or higher by 2028 into 2031. Okay, so it could be that kind of a bull market. I've researched researchers back 300 years for what we think the stock market did, meaning we really only know for sure on index-wise back to 1880s, but we do have samples of stocks going all the way back into the late uh, 1600s, early 1700s, something like that. Uh, at any rate, um, it looks like I, I think the stock market doubles from the end of uh, the last decade from the close of 2019, I think the stock market will be up 90 to 110, 120%. History shows it could be up 300%. We just don't know. But I don't think it's going to be as good as some of the more grand decades in the past because I think we will raise some taxes. I think we will shift money to the middle class and poor. I think the rich will be upset by this and they'll cause complications because after all, they own 80% of the stocks. If the rich want to crash the stock market and hurt the economy, they can do it. They just all got to get together, gang up on it, sell it, and you and I are done, okay? So that's all there is to that. But the bottom line here is I think I think that kind of wild stuff is a long ways off yet. I'm bullish to the end of the decade relative to the nine-year business cycle that basically says the economy grows for seven to 12 years. You get one to three years of recession. The stock market runs a very high correlation of that in terms of direction, duration, how long it lasts, okay, and, the, and somewhat to the turning points, okay, they may not correlate well to the economy in terms of how high or how low. I do think there could be a disconnect where the stock market gets too high priced relative to a lot of forms of analysis at times, okay? And it's only brief underpriced or undervalued, all right? Uh, I get the disconnect on a short-term basis on fundamentals. I, I think that's for real, okay? However, um, if this thing's going higher, there's going to be plenty of zigzags. The, the three-year business cycle or the LT1, uh, may the minor long-term, those are all labels I give it. And it's a little bit shorter than the kitchen cycle that you may see on the internet uh, in economic universities, perhaps the Federal Reserve. It is based on some uh, stati business statistics, if not economic statistics, okay? Uh, sometimes it's not really all that important on downside, by the way, okay? But I think what's going on is the stock market is going to rally into 2022. So I've set up objectives of maybe like 4,300, which goes with Ed Yardini's estimate for the end of this year. But I also can see this year on into next year, it could be as high as 4,800. And then I think it's going to set back sometime next, next year. So I'm going to set up an overlapping uh, gray box sometime 
for next year, maybe even into 2023, but I think I'll be all over in 2022. So we may yet see the stock market come all the way back to 4,000. Okay, if it only goes to 4,300, it may even come down to 3,800. Those are things we got to think about next year. But I think this year we give it a thumbs up and we try to stick with this and be bullish because I think there could be some good money made. Now, the next three-year business cycle will probably take us up into the 5,000 area. And so that means we'll be higher in 2024. And if we use the presidential cycle, which is the four-year cycle, and what I'm doing is saying, well, I'll start that cycle at the closing price of January, the month of the inauguration, the month that the new president officially takes over or the incumbent president takes over yet again, okay? And so what this means is that I now have a target statistically that's saying really under Biden we should see a 52% increase or more. So we should see 5600s or higher by 2024. But I am allowing political riffraff, complications, fightings, and this and that that upsets the market, maybe some government action that, the, that, uh, that Biden even wins on, but maybe the market eventually wakes up and doesn't care for that. And that would be specifically maybe some higher taxes. Uh, the inflation interest rates might surge a little too fast. And even though I still think it'll be a good thing and a good sign for the country, the stock market may not like it. Okay, so there can be headwinds to make this a little bit different this time around. So I'm dialing in maybe something like a 40% minimum upside. And so I'm dialing in minimum of 5100s on up to maybe minimum of 5600s. Anything higher is just a gift. We're just more right. We won't be wrong. We'll be more right. So the bottom line is on a long term basis, up down up into 2024 probably down in 2025 up in 2026 maybe 2027 uh down up again and somewheres in here can be a six-year cycle that's going to take two maybe three of those three-year cycles we don't know how many we don't know how late but somewhere around mid to late decade there could be a more serious setback okay and there could even be a secondary recession in this country. Secondary recessions normally are not called by most economists, as a group at least, and normally not called by the government. It slips under the radar screen. And I often tell people, if you didn't get beat up in the, the worst recession of a decade, you're probably going to be one of the few that's going to be beat up in the secondary recession. And primary or most important recessions normally occur near the start of a decade. And here we and we've seen it again. Uh, a little on the early side. And now that means we're probably going to get one around mid-decade. That could also be a fallout for commodities, by the way, and something more serious, perhaps, for commodities. Ultimately, however, all this zigzagging is likely going to be up. So I seriously doubt we're going back to the March 23rd low of last year, the major long-term business cycle. We could, however, come down much lower than I realize. We can come all the way down to near that low to 24.51. That's going to hurt. <laughs> That's all there is to it. It's going to hurt us as bulls, all right? But I don't see the reasoning behind that. I don't see the surprise. It could happen. We could get hit by an asteroid. We could get hit by a, uh, another pandemic. We now know, thanks to the pandemic, we now know we have to broaden the list of unknowns of weird, crazy things that could impact us. But from normal business, normal cons consumerism, normal government, we're not going to damage the market that bad. I think it's basically up this year and the next, basically up this decade, okay? So that's where we're at in terms of that scenario. Now, let's zoom in. And in other words, uh, my major long-term business strategies, it's up like 128, 130% right now since last year, uh, and is uh, running more than 22.5% up since 2010. That major long-term program does not manage risk along the way. Okay, it bought in 2009. I didn't keep track of it till 2010. And I've, I've now have a track record since 2010. I started selling and rebuying 2018 to 2020 as I tried to find a top and I was fortunate enough to sell the 2020 right near the high, got out for the collapse in the March. I was very fortunate enough to buy it March 25th within two days of the bottom of last year 
and I'm now going to set on it till 2028 to 2031 no matter what happens. The only way I'll manage risk is I may get out if it comes all the way back to the low of 2020. I may get out. I may decide, no, it's about over. I'm going to write it out. I don't know. But I don't think it's going there, folks. Okay? I'm bullish this decade. And I, in 2028, 2031, will sell it again, and I may have to jump in and out and throw several darts to find that top because I think tops are a little harder than buying the bottoms because I actually bought the bottom month in 2009 that was the bottom of the stock market for the Great Recession. The strange thing is I bought it within two days this time around, so I got a fair amount of accuracy. I think I did a pretty good job bottom in 2002. I think I bought near the low there as well. So maybe I have a better shot at picking, being more accurate in bottoms, I don't know, but they're, I can tell you they'll both be difficult probably, okay? So I'm setting on that, but that's a small portion of my money. I'm not managing risk in it. I will tr try to keep some money in that where I'd like to set on it for the whole decade, but I'll probably be taking some off on some of the more important signals. I'll probably sell some next year. I may sell some along the way off our level one signals. I have another larger sum of money that I'm probably going to trade in and out of these level one, level two signals. And to me, that's my combined performance. How am I doing trading in and out of these signals? I'm up 65% uh, in my little family hedge fund, which, by the way, I'm willing to open up to someone if they want to invest in it. Um, that's performance since the close of 2019. That's that's last year into next year. How am I doing the rest of my money? Probably 30 40% basically. Still pretty good when you consider the S&P is only up, what, 18%, maybe knocking door on the 20% now. Now, some of that has to do with use of leverage. I use leverage quite a bit. I'm, I'm currently like uh, 4X right now in that hedge fund. I'm currently uh, 2X. I like being 2X all the time. I don't like setting on cash. I don't like owning bonds. So I'm fully invested practically all the time. But I do jump in and out, sometimes quickly, all right? So I can help you with some of that decisions, okay, or those decisions. All right, here's what I'm kind of looking at is I think I've drawn some little lines here to kind of give us an indication of what's going on for this year. I think the market can kind of rally up this year into 40.63 on up into that heading towards that 4,300 mark. I think maybe we've got some support here as of this month, meaning it may not come back to this month's low for the rest of the year. But I can't rule out sideways trading action for a few to several months. And I'm thinking sometime in this decade, there may be an entire year the market goes nowhere. And inside of a trading range, if you go in it from the upside, it means you've got a big downside coming, perhaps. you got to have some downside to find the floor of that range. So this market can go down during this decade, no question about it, and at times go down sizable amounts, okay? So, by the way, next year, I don't think the market even drops 20%. I think it's probably going to drop more, no more than 10 12%, but I, could be, I can be wrong, okay? It may drop less even. We will see next year. All right, what have we got this year? All right, so basically it took out the January high. And my guess is this market is now rallying into summer. And even though it can violate this trend line that's showing support here all the way up through, it can certainly violate it. I don't think it stays below it for very long. And we may have to adjust that line be a little bit lower. What I am saying is I don't think it's going below this month's low or on the cash side last month's low, okay, anytime soon. I can be wrong. Some of these level ones, if you're using them for additional buys and you're a long-termer, sometimes you'll wind up buying lower than a prior level one. You may not be too happy about that, but at the same time, as long as we're right on the long term, you're just getting a better bargain and, and keeping from raising your average purchase price as high as otherwise. I'm going to switch to the weekly chart now. And I don't see any sense looking at the NASDAQ, but I will talk about some of the ratios uh, for some of the sectors in the market. So here's the S&P 500, and it took out the level one top. All right. Granted, there's now 10% probability that we could get a slam dunk in the next few weeks that it was a last minute level one, goes into a last minute level one bottom, and then moves higher. But I don't think so. Okay, I think we're on our way. I think this week's low in the futures is an incredible floor price. But we can also start using that as a risk point to say, gee, what's wrong? There very well could be something wrong. All right. Bottom line is I think this market rallies into late March, early February, pulls back in February. That will be for a level two fluctuation. That's the second most important kind of trend during the year. I think the market only pulls back 3%, 5% tops. 
maybe not even 3%. It doesn't even have to work. It could be a running correction, a little sideways consolidation, some slowdown, a hesitation. Then it just rallies again into May, June, July. So to me, the most important trend really is up from now into May, June, July. The biggest correction or setback along the way ought to be into a level two bottom and it's probably gonna occur in April. <clears throat> How do we know this? Well, it's all this pattern research of all those 12 major groups of market participants that gives us an idea how long it will take them to buy. And it's so accurate that I can use that as the number one thing and then use reverse modeling to go back and say, okay, what kind of technicals will help or not help? What will be the fundamentals that will help and not help? And let's, if we're right, then we're gonna get a fundamental bias that's gonna support that forecast, okay? And we may even get actual fundamental development and news cycles or even shocks or surprises that will help that forecast. Bottom line is I think there's a lot of money yet to go into this market and buy it. I think we're on our way. Weekly stochastic did not go to mid-range and is turning to a buy signal this week. I think it's got it's going to make it. I'll take it anyways, even though it's not mid-range and it's not oversold, which would be the better levels to feel more confident signal. How I look at it instead is it's backed away from overbought and it's reset. It's giving room to now rally and that means the market's going to go to record highs in coming months. Okay, So I say March is not only going to be an up month or most of it, uh, but I think record highs are coming. And I think February is probably going to close with a positive tone. we got more record highs coming. Now, um, we uh, so I'm bullish. Okay, for the level two trend, I'm bullish for the larger level one trend, I'm bullish for the all the long term and super cycles. I'm bullish this year, okay, into next. All right, we know we got our upside objectives. Uh, so what else can I tell you? Well, I think it's more in the near term, short term. So I think what I'm gonna say is pattern wise, this market should, should go higher into next week for a level three top. It may bump its head around 39, 35 or so. I may have some other objectives on the daily chart, I forget now. But I think there's a chance that they then start selling next week. And they may sell into the following week. So basically two to three weeks from now is the time to look for a level three bottom for the short term to very short term trader who might then want to flip back to buying. Maybe you can use that for some kind of late buying for these level two, level one trends and long term. Hopefully you've done most of your, hopefully you've already bought. Uh, I would not want to keep buying on the way up necessarily. I'm hoping everybody else does to make me right. Hopefully I've made my best purchase and, and I'm personally so invested I can't buy anymore anyhow. Okay, here's the daily chart. SSO futures, or I'm sorry, the SSO, SSO fund done by ProShares.com. Back in the 2000s, I met a vice president then. I like the company, I like the funds, I've been trading them ever since, okay? This fund is linked to the S&P 500. If the S&P 500 is going up, it's going up. It is a 2X fund, so if you're, you'll make and lose twice the amount you would if you bought in the S&P 500. By the way, if you want to buy just the S&P 500 and get a 1X, you would buy the SPY, very well-known fund, far more popular, far larger, and its symbol is normally SPY, okay? That's how you'll get one-to-one. -one. In my opinion, long-term, making just the performance in the stock market isn't good enough. That's why people try to buy stocks and beat the stock market, and I think most of the time, as a group, they only beat it somewhat. Many of them don't beat the market. I decided I'm just gonna trade the entire market. You do not have to do that, and most of my followers don't do that. They like to trade under their stocks, but they like me helping them know where the entire market's going, and some of them have learned that they like the idea of putting a little portion of their portfolio in all in, into the entire market, doing what I'm doing. Now, what I wanna show you the SSO record high, should go to another record high today, I think, at any rate, I, th I think it's going higher in the next week than down. Now, here's what I want to warn you. Notice this gap. That's huge. To me, that's just a trader's gap. It's not a breakaway gap. It doesn't set off by itself like a sore thumb or a fantastic, gorgeous bull, okay? But the point is they had a chance to turn it around. They didn't do it, and they gave up. They're going to record high. So they may not be paying any attention to that gap any, any longer. But next week, if it turns down, the closer it gets to that gap, 
the more they're going to rethink that and say, you know what, that may be a target. And you know what, that should get filled someday, somehow. So unfortunately, this has been a glorious run this week. It may knock out uh, practically all of this week's run. It may come back to the 92 area to fill that gap before moving higher. So this market can get choppy and sloppy on us, okay? But it's the type of gap that I can see where maybe it doesn't come back to that over the next two or three weeks, but it may. It's just something to consider, okay? All right, let's get back to the S&P 500 futures as a proxy to cash. This is the March futures. All right, it seems to be rallying towards this trend line for resistance. That may be where they start selling, take some profits. The model says they should buy into Monday, which is the earliest for level three top. It does not have to top to near the end of the week, even to the start of the following week, but my guess is it tops next week. It is overbought on a daily stochastic, narrowing spread, trying to roll over. That's a warning the, that the overbought signal can work, that a down some selling's coming, a warning the model can be right seeking this level three top next week. The market should then fall back into a bottom two weeks from now, okay? Now the cash might do some funky things because the cash market actually bottomed last week, I believe, because we had this overnight trade and then they turned around and the cash market never tried to really take that out. That might do some funky things where somehow the market bottoms towards the end of next week or, or, or maybe the cash bottoms a little ahead, a day or two ahead of futures for some reason, I don't know. We'll deal with that as we get out there. Uh, downside support uh, could be anywhere in this level, uh, 3,800s, uh, we'll see, going into to that level three low. Now it does not have to stop at this resistance line, even though I think it's a proven line, we have to consider it will, and it's overbought, so we have to consider it will, but it could go higher, okay? How much higher? Well, uh, this week taking out the prior high, the record high and the level one top, generated a critical point objective from this high and this bottom generated an objective to a minimum of 4,000. So it can go above 4,000 or at least to near 4,000. Will it do it next week? It may. This is fast enough pace, even with this overbought condition, it could. It's possible it waits for later this month, meaning they stall out below it, bring it down for level three, and then take it up and it's up there around three or four weeks from now and on into March and all that fun stuff. <clears throat> okay, so my guess is yes, this market's on its way to 4,000, just how long will it take? My guess, yes, it's going to 4,100 to 4,300 this year, just a matter of how long does it take? My guess is going into next year, it's going to 4,300 all the way up to 4,800, just a matter of how long does it take, okay? Uh, again, our downside risk point here is we may have to get out and reevaluate and question what's going on if it violates the low of February 1st, which is 3656.50. 0 0.50, and let's see if I can find that low for the S&P uh, daily. And that, yes, that would be last Friday, January 29th, the low of 3694.12 is your major important support and risk level where we got to figure out what's going on. The fascinating thing is I just realized this is a tiny gap for the cash. I didn't realize that relative to the SSO. Why is the SSO showing such a huge gap? Not sure, okay? Uh, this now makes me think, yeah, this gap doesn't even matter. But we will see, okay? Uh, again, it may not get filled two to three weeks from now if it is going to fill, but I'm kind of guessing it's not going to get filled. I think it's up and away, folks, but the market is overbought. Um, the cash really isn't doing anything rolling over yet, though. X stronger than the futures, actually. All right, what else can I show you here? We're pretty much trying to wrap this up. Let's check on the, oh, let's check on some of the internal kind of stuff. We want to go to the VIX. This made big news in the chatter and this and that. Remember I said I was going to give it one last chance for level two. I had a level two top here and I said this should be the latest. Lo and behold, look at that. They're just all wound up on uh, Twitter and whatnot of how that just abruptly reversed. I like it. I love it. I think that's a level two top. I think VIX might not go down all the way into March. It may move sideways, chop around. It may not get much lower than what we've seen. But I think basically it's not going to go up by huge amounts. Or if it does, it'll be a few days, no more than a week. Ultimately, I think that's support of the idea. Stock market's going higher in March. If VIX goes down, normally stock market goes up. Sometimes you see a few days at a time, uh, it does something, it breaks that rule a little bit. All right, uh, what else do we got? I want to flip back to some of the outside markets. Bonds. 
On bearish bonds, I think you can put stops above this week's high, last week's high, and just be bearish into March uh, to April, maybe. Uh, I think they're going lower. I think the bond market's saying, yes, we're going to grow this economy. That's all there is to it, okay? The money printing's there. It's going to work. It's going to go flow through. Economy's going to get better, okay? Interest rates are going to rise to sell bonds. That's what they're doing. And I just don't think they feel like there's a lot of risk over in the stock market. Uh, so that's the way it is, all right? That's the best I can tell you. Let's move on to the dollar. It's been rallying as we anticipated. It may top right here, right now. Uh, this week, it doesn't have to top to the rest of this month, but I think looking out to March, the dollar will at least ease back a little. The dollar could go sideways for a very long time now, but I think basically it's vulnerable to new lows this year relative last year that is going to extend last year's downtrend. I think that'll be somewhat supportive to the U.S. stock market because it should be supportive for our exports of goods and services and help our economy. And frankly, I know a lot of economists are against me on this, but I think a lower dollar is actually going to help the global uh, economy. So look for a chance to sell the dollar. All right, gold. Um, basically floundering around, still hasn't bottomed. It may not bottom for what, one, two, three weeks yet. It's not finding enough of the inflation story. It's not finding enough reason for growing economies to buy gold. I do think Bitcoin robs some of the demand. I don't think gold's going over 2400 now into mid-decade, and I think it'll be going lower later decade. It's really not that bullish, but I'm still a long-term bull. I'm still a super cycle bull, but I think uh, it's just not going to be all that grand or bull market for quite some time. It can trade a range for a very long time, yeah, <coughs> but I'm somewhat optimistic it'll be higher six months out, for, over the next six months. So another buy opportunity here, but it's just not behaving that well, quite sluggish. Here's our Bitcoin chart. I still haven't bought it and I don't think I'm going to, uh, but I do have a fund uh, that I now can't remember the symbol. It's GTBC or some combination of those um, that I thought I might pick up a little. Don't know as I care that much. I think Bitcoin can be very bullish and there's probably new millionaires coming out of Bitcoin, but I also agree with Ray Dalio. It can crash 80% at any time, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> Ultimately, I think Bitcoin goes higher <clears throat> into uh, March, okay? And I think that means the dollar goes lower. Sorry about that. I got a little coughing spell coming on here this morning, but I am healthy. All right, let's move on to um, what else I wanted to say. I think commodities in general uh, could, could consolidate going into March, but I think there's a chance to be bullish into uh, summer. Uh, I don't have much to say on the interweek, intraday stuff. It's kind of due for a little setback for level four, so they could do a little end of week profit taking here. But I think ultimately it's going to be higher next week for the U.S. stock market. All right, let's look at some of the, uh, oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to touch on some of the ratios, okay? And basically, this is the Russell 2000 versus the S&P 500. Uh, this is uh, the small caps, okay? I think it's reflective of small business. I think it's reflective of value investing and rotation. It looks strong. I think it has more to go. There could still be some good quality buying there. I don't know how long that will last, however, okay? Uh, let's see. As, uh, this is the NASDAQ versus the S&P 500. I think the NASDAQ drags its feet for maybe throughout this year, but for the decade, it could still outperform the S&P 500 because it's the latest, greatest, newest businesses, okay, in the high tech. But I think it's had such a good bull run last year into here that it can stall out and investors might like the S&P 500 more. It may have just put a top in even and may uh, consolidate and, and fluctuate a bit here going into next month as it has a difficult time competing with the S&P 500. But I can't say that for sure. Let's put it this way over the next two to three weeks if it takes out last week's high on that ratio. And I simply just divided the two indexes. I didn't play with them. I didn't weight them. Uh, that may be a sign that I could be wrong and NASDAQ is a little better uh, leader over the next uh, month or so. So there you have it, folks. Our weekly updates, super long-term, long-term, intermediate, short-term, bottom line is, is up and away. I think we did a great job. I'm sure some, anybody that jumped out last week and then get, did not get on board with me, I'm sure they're upset that this correction was not more serious, but I warned you it was meeting some downside objectives. I warned you it could bottom this soon and son of a gun, I did it, and I was really on top of it this week. I think some of this rally is people waking up, they missed the bottom, 
and they're now running behind. They were thinking February would be a significant bottom. They were thinking a uh, uh, weak January close is not a good sign for this year. Now they're concerned that's not working, and they better well be concerned it's not working. I'm willing to go with that statistic that's quite high. I think it's like 70% or 80% high by some way of looking at it, that in theory, this should not be all that great a good uh, year for stocks. I don't believe it. I am bullish, bullish. Thank you. Have a great week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Send any questions. I'll try to update you as good as I can. See you Monday morning for the morning brief.